So it's Gavin and Stacey in an hour. But first on BBC One, put your foot down and apply some pedal power. Hello, welcome to a very special edition of Bang Goes the Theory. Now, we've put up this house outside our studio, and inside, a family of four are fast asleep, and they're here to take part in a massive experiment. The only thing is, they've absolutely no idea what that experiment is. In fact, we've genuinely no idea whether or not it's going to work. Liz, are we up and running in there? We are indeed, Dallas. We are about to do something that no one in the world has ever tried to do before. We're going to unplug that house from the main supply and try to power it in a completely different way. Welcome to the human power station. Twelve gruelling hours. Eighty human dynamos. But just one question. Can we really pull this off? Oh, my God! Guys! Hello, and welcome to our very own human power station, where 80 cyclists are ready to power a family house for an entire day. Let's hope they're fit, because it's going to take a whole lot of work. Nothing on this scale has ever been attempted before. We're going to put a typical family's energy use under the spotlight to examine our love of this stuff. Electricity. First, we built our special house. Then we installed cameras in every room. And then last night, our brave guinea pigs, the Collins family, moved in. And why are we doing this? Because we're being told we're facing a global energy crisis which means big price hikes and, worse still, shortages. So it's a good time to ask, how much power do we all use, where do we waste it, and can we do anything about it? Now, the family will soon be up, but it's not going to be until the end of the day that they find out exactly how we've been providing power to their house. And that's when we're going to bring them back here into the heart of the power station for one massive shock. <laughs> Because we can't see electricity, we all take it for granted. So we wanted to show the effort it takes to generate it in a way we can all easily understand. Hard graft. Now, we should just make it absolutely clear that the Collins family have absolutely no idea about the potential chaos they're going to create here just by going about their usual morning routine. We've kept them in the dark deliberately because we don't want them to change their behaviour whilst they're in our house. Now, back home in Cheltenham, they're pretty much the same as most of us when it comes to using and wasting energy. Meet the Collins. Dad Andy is 41 and is a business support manager. Let me introduce you to each of the members of my family. I have my beautiful lady wife, Shelley. I'm a primary school teacher, um, and I teach year one and two. Never question her authority. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of washing, ironing, cooking, cleaning, and thank goodness that I've got a tumble dryer. I probably could do with two, but... <laughs> Next to me, I have my daughter, Sparky Plug, Isabel Collins. My homework is usually done on my computer. And then, over here, we have <laughs> my hair dryer, and then my curling tongs. Then we got the curly freckly one called Daniel. <laughs> Dad won't link me up to Sky or anything else because they don't want me going on the middle of the night. You know, my sister, when she goes on the computer at three o'clock in the morning, but my parents don't know. So I kind of have to keep it a secret. Andy's good, actually. Andy does the ironing, although he wouldn't like me to say that in public. He can cook baked beans and pasta. Toast. Toast, yeah, yep. but you burn it. Bring it up. OK. Go. Way. The best thing for an easy life is a cleaner <laughs> and as many domestic appliances that does it all for you. That's the Collins family at their house. Now back to our house. It's quarter past seven and the family will soon be stirring. But before they wake up, we're switching their electrical source from the mains to pedal power. But this is no mean feat. It's taken months of preparation. Here's how we got here. Meet our human power experts, Tim Siddle and Colin Tonks. 
They'd already worked out how to get electricity from a handful of bikes, but they were now going to have to massively scale up. Each bike has a dynamo at the back. One cyclist pedalling at a normal rate can power a 100 watt light bulb. But if they pedal harder and faster, they can generate nearly double that. Colin and Tim have calculated that it will take about 80 bikes to meet the power needs of our typical family. But because no one has ever done this before, they don't really know. And this is their moment of truth. Some cyclists will be needed to provide a constant supply of electricity to the appliances that are on all the time, like the fridge and freezer. The others will be kept ready to meet any sudden surges in demand. Colin and Tim, how's it all going? Are you guys OK? Yeah, it's going all right at the moment. We're just sprinting a couple of rows because the voltage has just started to drop. OK, we are totally connected to the house. Somebody is stirring, as you can see. He's turning the telly on. He's turning the telly on already. <laughs> Typical First teenager, I can't believe it. Now, come on, give me some odds, Tim. How likely do you think it is that we might have a meltdown? How positive are you feeling at the start of the day? I'm nervous. I'd say we got about a 50% chance. Now listen, explain this voltmeter up there for us. What is it basically measuring? It's system voltage. Basically, the higher the voltage, the better for the riders, the less resistance, okay. the easier it is going to be for those guys to actually pedal. So that... we, we basically need to be in the green. If we hit the white, what does that mean? There's cause for concern there if we hit the white. We're OK, really, till we hit the black. What happens? But is that a blackout? We're worried if we get anywhere near the red. Black really. basically means blackout, lads. We don't want to go anywhere near that. So green is good, white is worrying, red is really worrying, and black is a blooming disaster. Total loss of power, a blackout. That's the biggest risk we are facing today. Each household appliance uses a different amount of energy. But what we don't know is when are they going to be used, how long for, or how many are going to be used at the same time. What we do know is that some appliances are going to be worse than others. So watch out for the kettle, the washing machine, and the dishwasher. Anything with a heating element will also prove tough going. That's your ovens, toasters, and irons. But the scariest appliance of all, because it will need all 80 of our cyclists pedaling as fast as they can to avoid blackout, is the electric shower. OK, I can distinctly see a little head poking out uh, from under a duvet. Arms are being stretched. Oh, movement in the sitting room. We're moving towards the old kitchen, which means... <laughs> can you hear all our cyclists going, oh, no, here we go. Guys, it's all about to kick off because this means breakfast. And with breakfast comes toasters, kettles, possibly an oven to warm something up. How are you guys feeling about this? I'm this is really, where we really get tested. This is really nerve-wracking. Look, he's got oh, the kettle. The kettle? <laughs> so oh, I no. Look. Kettles use a lot of power. Yeah, How kilowatts. many watts are we talking about? Three kilowatts, three kilowatts is it? Kilowatts. OK. Oh, yeah. The kettle is not our friend today. Certainly, these guys are not looking forward to the kettle being boiled. Oh, he's putting it on. Here we go. OK, we're guys, we're get ready. Our needles dropping ever so slightly. I can feel our cyclists are now pedaling faster. Keep a nice, steady pace, boys. Plug it in at the socket. Hey, guys, now we were at 30, hitting 31. It's dramatically dropped yeah. since the family are up. I just want to make the reminder that we have asked them to behave exactly as they would at home. So hopefully you're seeing, you know, their normal behaviour. There's nothing set up here at all. The kettle's only boiling half a litre of water, but it's taking over 20 cyclists. And guess what? Breakfast is only just beginning. Keep it up. That's good. OK, we're losing a little bit on our meter. Yeah, our meter is dropping. Yeah. Uh, can I come to you and ask you? I've been told that nobody really is going to be able to get off the bikes if we just can't afford to lose you guys. Are you happy really? with that? Well, 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Flat out. Tough. Let's see how we'll we do. How I'm liking it, though, because the needle is moving back towards the green ever so slightly. Okay. Here we go. Get this. 
from the reaction of the cyclists, we know something's going on, okay? The toaster is coming on, and that equates to about a kilowatt of power. About 10 of our cyclists are required to power that, to make a couple of pieces of toast. Can I ask you really quickly, does that make you think about toast in a completely different way? Oh, completely. <laughs> Oh, hang on, he's turning, he's actually fiddling with the knot. Oh! Oi. Toast is up, toast is up, he's, toast he's is back. Out. Toast is up. Toast is up. It's down again. It's, it's on again, it's, it's on again. Toast is on again. I yeah, can't I believe they are toasting the bread <laughs> a second three. time. <laughs> What's that about? Andy's, uh, Andy's struggling with the toaster here. He's, he's fiddling with the um, browning knob. All right, row two, can we have a little bit more power, row two? Let's walk down this way. Let's see. Oh, here's someone taking a break. This is no good work. What's going on? Not cramping the toe. Cramp? We don't care about that. How have you been finding today? A challenge. <laughs> and here's another challenge. Mum's decided to heat up some milk. Well, she's put the microwave on. I mean, they're usually 800 to 1,000 watts. That's a high-power device because it's used for heating. Now, uh, these guys seem to be well up for it. The needle's kind of hovering up in the green zone, which is good, but it's very early in the morning. Now, keeping up this power when you're fresh is fine. Come about 6 o'clock tonight, it could be a different story. Well, as that drops out... That's we definitely dropped out. Me and Gemma are going to stop yeah. pedalling, because that's definitely I'm dropping out. I'm getting as well. Come on. It's really dropping. <laughs> My spinning glasses are paying off now, you see. Harder, boys. Oh. Microwaves are bad news because they take up a lot of power, but good news because the power demand is only for short bursts of time. We're now at 29. It's looking better. Yeah, that feels good. So that's our first test of the day, the family getting up, and we seem to have uh, just pulled through it. Would anyone like any more cereals? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm good, thank you. So, two cups of tea, two mugs of coffee with microwave milk, and three slices of toast. A fairly ordinary breakfast, but it took over 50 of our cyclists to generate that electricity. In terms of pedal power per minute, that's 30 cyclists for the kettle, nine for the toaster, and the microwave took 14. Now, we've got two experts in our midst talking us through our human power station experiment. First of all, we've got Dr. Francis Galvanoni, our energy expert, and Professor Tim Jackson, who is a behavioral expert. Now, Francis, if I can come to you first. That kettle this morning required 30 of our best cyclists pedaling full throttle to get the kettle boiled. Now, most of us, I don't think, realize how much energy a kettle actually uses, do we? No, I mean, it's also how you use your kettle that's important. For example, some people fill the kettle all the way up just for one cup of tea, or pull the kettle, then go away and make a call and come back and reboil it, and obviously that's twice as much energy. So actually, how you use your kettle as well can make quite a big difference. Absolutely, definitely something to think about. And Tim, you know, we are beginning to come around to the idea that we're just using too much energy, but still, why do we find it so hard to break habits of a lifetime? It's, it's a kind of a puzzle in a way. I mean, what, what it, you're right to say we're getting a little bit more aware, but it's still energy is at some distance from us. Nobody sees all this. No, yeah. Nobody sees what's coming through. It's, it's designed around making it easy for us to push a switch. And the switch, what does the switch do? It allows us to do the things we love. So we have an emotional attachment to all the things that energy does for us yeah. and very little emotional attachment to energy itself. But with a growing energy crisis, can we afford these attitudes for much longer? Later on, we'll be finding out how much energy some of the worst appliances use. And the strange things you could do with the power we waste. 9.45am, the family is migrating away from the breakfast table. Dad's in the kitchen, Mum's getting dressed, and the kids are now in the living room. Right, throughout the day, we're going to be trying to keep up with the family's electricity demands, whatever they might be. So every time they switch something on in the house, these poor people above me are going to have to pedal. And the more power they use in the house, the more cyclists will need and the harder they'll have to work. Now, over here, we have Jessica, your Shelley's sister. What do you think so far of what you've seen? Is this a normal day 
for, for your family? Well, it's a normal day apart from these guys all here I mean, cycling to make their energy. Well, I mean, you don't that's have that amazing. Funnily <laughs> 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 enough. Um, and who in the family do you think are the real culprits in terms of uh, using energy? Well, to be honest, I think that they're just a regular yeah. family who use energy in a normal kind of way. I, they'll be having showers, um, they'll be watching the TV, they'll be playing games. So there's no one who like and will stay in the shower for sort of half an hour. Maybe with Andy. the radio. Is he a big shower person? See, that could be our downfall. That's what we're worried about. Someone <laughs> who decides they're going to stay in the shower for an hour. Who knows? Thank you. Okay, we'll 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 keep watching. It's 10 o'clock and the Collins leisurely Sunday continues to unfold. Can we turn on the wheel? They could do it. We fit. And that means they're going to fire up a whole new set of appliances. What's the appeal of we fit? They're so cool. You get this to stand on a board. OK, it's all about entertainment in the house right now. We've got the Wii on, we've got the television on. What does that mean for our cyclists? How much power are we talking about right now? Oh, it's not substantial. I mean, probably two or three riders could probably do that on their own in the sprint. Okay. The Wii's about 52 watts, and I think that plasma is right. about 200 watts. But it all adds up. There are about 65 million television sets in the UK, switched on for an average of four hours a day and 30 million digiboxes and 30 million DVD players, all soaking up a colossal 5,000 billion watts of power every single year. Now, we're talking a lot about power today, aren't we? The more power an appliance needs, the more watts it's using. It's as simple as that. But you may well be wondering, what exactly is a watt? A watt is a measure of power. It tells us how fast we're using energy. If you think of this paintball as a lump of energy, a joule is the standard measure. If I'm firing out one a second, that's like one watt, the power a radio requires on standby. But that's just one measly watt. Now, if you're watching a DVD, your DVD player requires a constant 13 watts. That's 13 of my little lumps of energy every second. a much faster rate of fire. So the more watts a machine requires, the faster it's using energy. Therefore, the faster you're spending money on electricity. But DVDs and radios are not particularly powerful. When you're watching your telly, now that demands 130 watts. And to paint you a picture of that, I'm gonna need guns, lots of guns. Three, two, one, fire. You some idea of the relative power use around your house. But even TVs aren't particularly power hungry. To carry on this demonstration up to a vacuum cleaner, I'd actually need a small army of these guys. Enough! Give the telly a break. All right, let's get back to the house and see what the Collins family are up to now. Okay, I'm watching Dad. I don't know what he's doing. He's mooching about a bit. Where's he gone? He's vanished. I can't he's see where he is now. He's, okay, he's, uh, he, he's... Oh, the shirt's coming off! The shirt's coming off! Dad is taking off his clothes! Oh. <laughs> I mean, he's a good-looking man. He's a good-looking guy, don't get me wrong. <laughs> we got Avert your eyes! Avert your eyes! Okay, right. so basically... I think by that we can uh, we can ascertain that Dad is about to have a shower. We what does that mean? We need all cyclists on board now because it's not any ordinary shower, it is an electric shower. It's been switched on, the most feared appliance in the house. It's the moment we've all been dreading. There we go. OK, Tim and Colin are really whipping the cyclists up they now. They really Don't are now. An electric shower, of course, means 8.5 kilowatts. That equates to about 70 of our cyclists on, sprinting go, like the go, go, go. to get that power go back, shower go. going. We need some power. Come on, guys. ASAP. Let's go. We we're in the white, boys. We're in the white. Go, dig, dig. And the needle is dropping. It's gone up again. Come on. Keep going. Give it, it welly, boys. Up. Keep going. Oh. And of course. Mrs. C's sister did say that Mr. Collins That's likes him. to have That's a grand him. long shower in there. Who 
because it's just some fresh legs just arrived and jumped on the bike. So seven people just arrived from uh, Burnhill Velodrome. So that's really good news. OK, talk me through how many cyclists we have now on the board. I believe floor. we've got a 78 cyclists currently pedalling. We've put on as many people as we've got and everyone is pedalling as hard as they can. All right, guys, can we get a bit more pace? That's dropping. 26, we need to get back in the green. Come on, guys! Go, dig deep! Come on, the front, let's go! Come on! Keep going, it's not off! Keep going! Guys, come on, let's go, we need a bit more pace. Dallas, are you all right, my love? Yeah, well, here's the thing, you've actually got to pedal like you're pedaling uphill to engage and to generate the power. Can you no really good... feel it? It's no good just to kind of free wheel. You actually need to have a bit of resistance. Can you feel it? Yeah, yeah. yeah like massive. <laughs> Our cyclists are going like the clappers. It's literally like pedaling very fast uphill. They've gained some power. We're back in the green. Well done, guys. He's out of the shower. Oh, my God, the relief is mighty. Woo! Well done, everybody. Well done. And that's how bad an electric shower is. Dad was in there for a full five minutes, but that's not long compared to most of us. The average time is seven minutes. I, I think the thing to remember here is this is just a normal family doing completely normal things. Nobody is doing anything that is different. I mean, is that strange to you, the fact that what you're seeing here is nothing out of the ordinary? Will this make you think about when, how you use your power at home? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and to think we're generating, like, 20p or something ridiculous and the amount of work we're putting in. Our cyclists have been at it for two and a half hours now, so how much electricity have they generated for the house so far? Nick, how are we doing in mission control? What, what's the uh, scores on the doors? We've like? generated a total of 2.1 kilowatt hours since point... we started this morning. But, which sounds pretty good. And are, we, are you happy? We haven't had a blackout We yet. haven't had any power problems at all. All the equipment's working really well here. Let's translate 2.1 kilowatt hours into something we can all relate to. Come with me, we'll have a look over on our wonderful chart. So 2.1 kilowatt hours, if you have a look at this, uh, where are we? Okay, well, they're just, just, let's call it two for the sake of it. Okay, so two kilowatt hours, that is the equivalent of 215 and a bit of change miles cycled altogether. In terms of um, quarter pound of burgers, which I'm sure you're interested in, that's the equivalent of 33.282 quarter pounders, which is the equivalent of 279 digested biscuits. It's all good. All right, guys, slow it down a little bit. Slow it down a little bit. Back in the house, Mum and Dad have had the coffee machine on, Dan's fiddling with the MP3 player, and Isabel's getting dressed. Like most of us, the Collins' energy demands seem pretty typical and they don't seem to be particularly wasteful. But the shocking thing is, our energy consumption has doubled over the last few decades. Why is that? Now, we've had all mod cons in our homes for decades, but just how many things in our house actually consume power? Now, back in the 1970s, most homes had, on average, about 17 items that relied on electrical power. A television. A kettle an iron, a radio, a toaster, a very, very nice hoover, and, of course, this uh, very charming occasional lamp, not to mention fridges, freezers and such like, which are obviously a little bit too big to put on this conveyor belt. But here's the thing. By the year 2000, we'd added a whole host of other items. So you've got your computer, uh, radios, you've got your PSP here, digital cameras, uh, hair dryers, which I don't use, drills, hair straighteners, uh, what have we got here, DVD player, uh, PlayStation, that's your Digibox, which everyone forgets about, charging up your iPod, uh, this strange-looking contraption, uh, which is a deep-wrap fryer, 
uh, and a microwave oven. So basically, we're now using twice as much electricity as they did 30 years ago, and all of these appliances and gadgets are eating up power and costing us money. Dr. Francis Galvanoni, our energy expert, is with us. Now, Francis, I thought manufacturers were finally beginning to make our appliances more energy efficient, but is that true or not? Yeah, they're getting better, and there's a lot that's happening behind the scenes. But unfortunately, we're getting worse with the amount of appliances we have in our homes. Yeah. So we've got more and more, and therefore we're using more and more energy. So that so all adds up and costs us money, doesn't it? It does. And of course, we love sizing up our appliances. We're going all American style on it. Big double door fridge freezers and the big tumble dryers. Yeah, and what we're tending to do as well is that we're getting our American side-by-side -side fridge, and then we're putting our old fridge down in the basement to keep our beer cool. So another example of how we're using more appliances in the home. And these cyclists are certainly paying for it today. What do you reckon about our cyclists there? Aren't they great? I was really impressed. Do you fancy a pedal? I really wanted to go, but I can't with these shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Let her off the hook for that. <laughs> Back in the house, it's 10 past 11, and after a slow start, the Collins are ready for a Sunday morning clean-up. Right, I'll go get Henry. Ah. Within minutes, appliances are going on left, right and centre. OK, quick update. We've had, a, a, obviously, a big sudden burst of power. You can see now we've got a bit of light hoovering going. That's sucking up a bit of power. The iron is about to go on, and they've just put on a, on a, a load of washing. This is all really sucking up the power, so you guys are going to have to really pedal even harder now. <laughs> Sorry. We're recruiting everybody we can today to keep that power going to our house, even Mrs C's sister. How does it feel to help your family get their energy requirements for the day? Well, I think I'm going to see things a bit differently after this. <laughs> is it really interesting to kind of watch them in action and see exactly how much each appliance is needing? Absolutely. And uh, there's a funny energy on the floor so that as soon as uh, it starts going down, everybody's getting really pepped up. I think they're going to be exhausted by about midday, though. Are you going to stick on that bike for very long? Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> I think I'm off for a cup of tea soon. But seriously, well done. You're going to have to pedal for your tea, you know that. <laughs> OK. The breakfast rush was over mercifully quickly, but this new gang of appliances is a very different story. Not only are they more hungry for energy, but they're also on for much longer. The house is now draining over five kilowatts of power. Dad's taking his time with the hoovering, Mum's putting on more washing, Dan's using the iron, and Isabel's lurking in her bedroom drying her hair. Air dryer's on. Right, let's go. We've got a hair dryer on, two kilowatts. Actually, Tim, while you're here, can I just ask you, sure. in terms of what's going on now, there seems to be lots... People have got lots of different things going on. The, the, the iron a bit of an appliance frenzy in the house at the moment. We've got the iron, the hoover. Yeah. I think we just had the kettle on, food mixer. What does, um, that mean for, what does that well. mean for you and your team? It's pretty chaotic because there's lots of appliances switching on and off with the washing machine and the iron with thermostat. As the morning passes, the Collins family remains blissfully unaware of the mayhem they're creating in here, just a stone's throw from their front doorstep. The coffee machine is back on, and Baker Isabel's traded in her hair dryer for a far worse appliance, the electric oven. I mean, so far, I'm looking at the needle, it's still on green, but when the oven goes on, presumably... You should it's... see it drop yeah. considerably, yeah. OK. But we're going to watch, the... we're going to watch for that oven. Uh, yeah. We should be going on. Oh, oh the oven's going on. Yeah, the oven is now on. And you can already see the needle, actually. Jen, can you see that? The needle, straight away, as soon as the oven on, that needle is going down. When the power went on, it's the same as the you feel it in your legs, that you feel the extra resistance on the bike. OK, I'm going to jump on a bike now. I'm going to jump on a bike, OK. Let's paddle, come on! On top of everything else, the oven is now eating up a massive two and a quarter kilowatts. This is serious business, guys. Our cyclists did so well earlier on with the power shower. They got us out of that pickle, but now this is really when we need them to pull it out of the bag. They're giving it full pelt, and still we're not able to climb out of the white on the meter and back into the green. Dallas. 
Are you all right, my love? Oh, this is horrible. Honestly, this is the worst exercise class we've ever taken, isn't it, really? We are slowly sinking on that meter. We were at 27, we're now at 26. We're basically halfway through the meter. I don't know how we're gonna be able to get out of this situation. Hi there, how are you doing? What's your name? I'm Justin. I'm absolutely exhausted. Are you really exhausted? We've just had a sudden, you know, burst of power as, they, as they've turned on all these appliances. Can you actually feel it as you cycle? Yeah, you can certainly feel it. As soon as it starts ticking up, you know, you've got to work that much harder. Yeah. And the thing is, they haven't actually been doing that much. I mean, they've been doing a little housework and, and washing. Nothing that we would, would consider extraordinary, would we? It's pretty standard stuff, really. And it just really opens your eyes to see how much we actually take it for granted, really. You can actually tell how much power an individual's generating roughly by feeling the heat of their motor. Okay. This fellow back here, you could cook an egg on his motor. That's... Come with us back here. Okay. That is unbelievably hot. Feel that? Wow. Right. And then compare that with like somebody. This girl here generates a stack of power. Her motor's like proper cooking. Now, I don't want to be offensive to her. I don't want to oh no, we get, this here. is going to get really competitive now. Yeah, how, hot, how hot are the motors? We knew things would be tough today, but this mass attack of appliances is proving to be a major drain on all of our cyclists. Dad has been hoovering for over 40 minutes, and that alone is sucking up the power from 11 of our human dynamos. Right, guys, come with me. We're going to talk to Colin. Colin, literally every appliance is on. We've got the washing machine, the oven is on. Yeah. How are you yeah. feeling? How are the cyclists going to be able to cope with this load? We, we're approaching, I think, maximum capacity, or might have actually exceeded. We're that in the moment. white now. We're in, the, we're white. in the white. I think we're doing about the equivalent of a, of a power shower, plus a little bit more. But Ooh. you know, earlier that was five minutes. This could go on for quite a while. Come on, we need a little bit more, guys. I felt that your motor is very hot. You are generating a stack of power. How do you maintain it? It's just keeping a decent cadence, really. If you can keep a cadence of about 90 RPM, it's pretty efficient. It, you've got the vocabulary of a professional cyclist. Yeah. Although you've got to be a fairly confident cyclist just to wear those shorts, I feel. Back in the house, the washing machine has finished heating up its water, but the oven is only now reaching cooking temperature. Liz, are you OK? Oh, I now really understand what these guys have been going through for the last, I don't know how many hours. This hurts your legs. You're really feeling the resistance right now. Yeah, and I think... It's that bloody oven. Can I just ask, how long do you think you'll be able to keep up this pace? About another two seconds. Another two seconds, seconds. good. We're back in the green, people! We're back in the green. I have to say, I think it's kind of down to you. I've never seen a man sweat so much. How long do you think you can actually keep this going? Because, I'm, 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 to be honest, I'm concerned about you. Just the amount of fluids that you've lost. Don't worry, I've got life insurance. The have you? Yeah, the wife's checking it out at the moment. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> so, let's look at the electricity bill from our human power station in pedal power per minute. It takes 11 cyclists for the Hoover, 17 for the washing machine, 15 for the iron, 18 for the hair dryer, and a punishing 24 cyclists for the oven. I've got Professor Jackson with me here now. Oh, Professor, what you've seen today of this family's behaviour, would you say that's fairly typical of an average family's power use? Yeah, what you've got here is you've got four people. They're all together. It's their day off. They've got to get things done. They're using the appliances, but they also want to enjoy themselves. So on the whole, it is a typical day's use. That's quite worrying. I can personally vouch for how hard it's been trying to keep up with the Collins family. And, uh, and this guy over here, have a look at him. Mate, I can't help noticing you seem to be supplying an awful lot of power to that household. Uh, how does it feel? Well, um, I've been on for a good few hours now, and I am getting tired, I must admit. But um, it's interesting because a lot of the activities that I'm observing and perhaps criticising them for, I think I'm actually doing them myself. So knowing how hard I have to work to keep their habits up is going to make me think about what I do when I get home. What does prosperous mean? Come on, we need a little bit more, guys. Prosperous. Prosperous. Yeah, um, looking good for the future. Um, like, in a sort of rich way. Let's go! Keep it in the green, keep it off. 
We're over halfway through the day and our cyclists are already pretty tired, but all they've done is keep up with a typical amount of domestic energy use. But so far so good, we're succeeding in our challenge to power that house for a whole day with just pedal power. I'm back in Mission Control with Nick. How are we doing in terms of family energy consumption for the day? Where are we up to? Uh, we're up to 6.2 kilowatt hours. 6.2 kilowatt hours. OK, come with me. Let's have a look at our board and see what that uh, equates to. 6.0. Here we are. In terms of energy, in terms of miles cycled, that's equivalent to 666 miles and a little bit, uh, which in my favourite one, uh, in terms of quarter pounder burgers, that is 103.1746032 uh, quarter bounders uh, to the nearest eight decimal places. Or in old money, of course, that is 866.7 digestive biscuits. OK, it's just gone one o'clock and the Collins family are heading out for a walk. At last, the oven and washing machine are turned off. OK, it looks like the family are getting ready to leave the house now, which will come as a massive relief to our human power station. The power demand is getting less. It's going to start getting a lot easier for these fellas. The house may be empty, but the Collins are still using power. And here's the thing, a lot of it is unnecessary. Whilst the family are out, Liz is going to sneak in and see what they've left on on standby. And that's why some of these guys behind me, these, these steady eddies, uh, are still pedalling away. And let's face it, a lot of us do this, leave things on standby, because quite frankly, it's just so convenient, especially when you're talking about things like laptops. But what you may not realise is that every appliance left on is burning up quite a bit of electricity all day, every day. So if you've been surprised by how much power we use without thinking about it, wait until you see how much we waste. I have to admit, I've had a really nice time snooping around the house while the family's away. Come with me. I have found stuff on standby. First of all, in Dan's room, TV on standby. Now, as you know, culprit number one for power usage is, of course, the electric shower. Take a look at this. It's on standby. Now, the rest of downstairs isn't actually too bad. Mum and Dad and daughter Isabel have been pretty good. Nothing on standby in their rooms, but it's a very different story when you get upstairs. Right, first up, television, DVD player and games console, all on standby. There's an MP3 player here and alarm clock radio left on standby as well right here. And also Mum had a computer on the dining room table and it's on standby. In the kitchen, a few more appliances. We're talking about the microwave being on standby. Ah, the coffee maker's actually just been left on. There's a clock radio there as well. And that's about it. But of course, they've also left the lights on uh, in the kitchen. So all in all, not too good a picture. Now, if you use one of these really cool handy meters, you can actually calculate how much power all those appliances that are on standby are using up. Now, in this house, I've calculated it's roughly about 200 watts of power. That equates to two of our cyclists in there cycling full pelt, OK? We're not too happy about that. And of course, if you think about all the households that have appliances on standby, it all adds up. So how much standby electricity is Britain wasting each year? To show you, we've brought a Tesla coil into our studio. It generates such massive voltages, it creates artificial lightning, visible flashes of pure electricity. That bolt of lightning going on there is using the same amount of energy that a laptop uses left on standby for just one hour. But it gets worse. Leave your TV on standby for an hour and the wasted energy looks like that. Now, if you imagine, in all our homes, there are millions and millions of these appliances we leave on standby. And if you combined all that wasted energy for one year, you could make a bolt of lightning so massive it would destroy this studio. So instead, I'm going to show you what that wasted energy looks like in hard cash. This is £875 million. That's what we waste on standby electricity in a year, £875 million. Now, there is a big difference between what I'm doing here and what we're all doing at home. Here, I'm not burning real money. 
Most of our cyclists have been able to have a bit of a breather whilst the Collins have been out. But it's quarter to four and they're heading back to the house. And it's time for us to get to grips with an even bigger energy waster than standby electricity. But before we do that, let's see what the family are up to. Quick update on what's been going on in the house since our family came home. Daughter Isabel has been cooking up a lovely crumble. The whole family have been playing computer games and the microwave has been in action again. OK, our cyclists are ticking over nicely, but now it's time to meet enemy number one when it comes to wasting energy. And it's not your giant fridge freezer or your tumble dryer. It's actually this, your standard filament light bulb. Now, we can see that there are still a few of these old school lights burning away in a Collins house. Now, you are probably sick and tired of hearing about switching to low energy bulbs. But I'm going to try something now that I don't believe has been done and it might give you food for thought. To do that, I'm going to need this chicken. Now, nearly all the energy, more than 90% of it, that goes into these bulbs is turned into heat, not light. They'd actually make better heaters than they would illuminators. In fact, I've calculated that there's enough wasted heat energy given off from two of these bulbs to cook a chicken. So, I've built this oven, and inside I've got holders for two bulbs. If I just pop that one in there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to season my chicken. That'll be lovely. Pop it into my oven. Switch it on. Put on my well-insulated lid. OK. Now, if I'm right, which I think I will be, in 90 minutes' time, that chicken will be ready. And I promise you, in exactly 90 minutes, I'm going to take it out and start eating it. And if I'm wrong, I promise you, Dallas will start eating it. Right, so you want a bite? That much? Back to the house, Dan's finishing off the crumble and Mum's going to be cooking her chicken in a more traditional way. All pretty average stuff, you might think, except they're heating up the oven again. And remember, that's a punishing two and a quarter kilowatts. It's already been a long day for our cyclists, but the needle on our voltmeter is starting to sink again. Colin, Colin, Colin. Uh, this is the first time I've seen you on a bike here. <laughs> Don't tell me this is the captain going down with a sinking ship. No, I'm not sinking. I'm just keeping them afloat at the moment. I'm not the best cyclist. <laughs> I've been getting some stick as well from the rest of them. <laughs> so I'm under a lot of pressure at the moment. <laughs> Keep it up, that's good. Just so you know, we did ask the Collins family to behave exactly as they would do on a normal weekend. So they bought all their dirty washing and a few favourite gadgets with them, as well as uh, being very fond of cooking. They're baking up a storm today. Watching them all day has been Auntie Jessica, Mrs Collins' sister. Jess, you're a true sport for helping with the pedal power. Thanks a million. Are you surprised by anything you've seen today? Um... I thought there was a bit more cooking than usual, but may maybe not. Um, they they cooked a sponge cake. Now they're making apple crumble. They're cooking Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. I hope they're giving some to me. But um, yes, the oven seemed to be on for a long time when it wasn't cooking. Yeah. And when you obviously when you see people actually having to physically pedal in order to keep that going, it really brings it home what that means. Thanks to you, we're back into the clear. Did we get her back? Come on, that's it. Good job. <laughs> the oven is still on, but our cyclists are just about keeping up with it. No good. Mrs Collins, though, is creating even more pedal pain. She's left the fridge door open, something we all do, but it's wasted energy that we've now got to make up. OK, they've left the fridge door open in the kitchen. Close the fridge, people! Yeah, can you close the fridge door? If we all shout really loudly... That will kind of ruin oh, the that experiment. That might ruin it, yeah. <laughs> Tim, if I can come to you, can I ask you, are there any different attitudes within a family unit when it comes to energy usage? Yeah, there are. Typically, women do tend to be a little bit more energy conscious. It is the truth. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. And um, when it comes to sort of who would be more energy conscious, is, is it the kids, is it the adults? How does it really work in general? 
kids is really interesting. I mean, kids uh, embody a sort of conflict. They come home from school knowing some of this stuff more than their parents do, and with much more environmental consciousness, and yet, at the same time, they want the toys. They do, don't they? They want the Wii Fit and the Wii Sports, and they want to be on the internet, and those kind of energy-consuming things. There's a little sort of conflicted there. Quick update on the house. Isabel, Dad and Dan are watching TV. At 200 watts or two cyclists, a relatively low energy activity. There are some lights on in the kitchen and Mum's still not put the chicken in and to keep that oven hot is proving to be a real slog. Our cyclists are looking so incredibly tired. My heart is going out to them. They've been pedaling for so long, so hard, constantly. I just don't know how much longer they can last. The good news is that in just a short while, we will be bringing our family into the studio and finally showing them what has been going on in here. And that should be a really interesting moment. It's nearly half five and mum's chicken is still waiting to go into the oven, but Jem's light bulb version, believe it or not, is ready to come out. 90 minutes ago, I put this chicken in my special homemade oven, heated only by two standard 60-watt light bulbs. And remember, the reason why I was so confident of doing this is because of the vast amount of heat wasted by light bulbs. Now, the other thing I remember is you did say you would eat it whatever. Yeah. Okay, and now it's okay. time for whatever. I'm, I'm going to be surprised. Right, my this nice is fitting done. lid here. That's very. Um, Let's get that off. You go for it. Come, come on. Oh! Now that looks like a cooking That's, oven. That smells great. That, yeah, yeah, Dallas. That smells really good. I've changed, I've, I've changed my mind. Uh, you'll have to excuse there. fingers here. That's okay. I'm rest. Oh, it's so succulent. I can barely lift it up. Oh, that's just like melting off the bone. That's it is. Great. Oh, I got the fella. Got the. Well, look really at that. Really good. Put that on. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the skin could be a bit crispier, but I'm not. You know, I'm not complaining. Okay. Now, but remember, Excellent. this was cooked with just the wasted heat yeah. from two light bulbs. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Look at that, Dallas. That is amazing. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Uh, any more? Am I allowed to? Am I allowed to yeah, have a yeah, go? Yeah, yeah. Get in that? there. Get in there. Oh. I'm going to even have some of the bits from the middle. I feel so confident. Okay, this is a nice bit of brass. Oh. How is it? Oh, good. Light bulb chicken. Tried at home. Now, fantastic as that chicken is, there is a serious point to this. We could not have done this with low energy light bulbs. It was only possible to cook that chicken because of the massive amount of wasted heat given from standard filament bulbs. Low energy bulbs don't give off anywhere near as much heat. And if we had to put a chicken in there after an hour and a half, it would have been inedible. Over 200 million light bulbs were sold last year in the UK, but only one in five was of the energy saving kind. Can I just move my foot a bit? The Collins are having a laid back Sunday afternoon, but our cyclists are paying for it big time. The irony here is the power the family are casually demanding is mostly not being used. And as a nation, our ever increasing demand for power has led to real fears that the national grid just won't be able to keep up. Unless we cut down our usage by being more aware, in less than 10 years, we could be facing massive power cuts. Why does any of this matter? Well, clearly, it's costing us money. But the bulk of our electricity also comes from power stations that burn fossil fuels, creating large amounts of carbon dioxide. Really bad news for the environment. Let me show you how much fossil fuels we would have burned so far today if this wasn't a human power station. Now, basically, it's this much coal or this much oil. Now, that may not seem much to you, but remember, that's just in one day in one house. Scale that up to a year, and you can begin to imagine how fast we are actually burning up our fossil fuels. Now, in terms of carbon dioxide, we would have produced 30 balloons full of the stuff in just one hour. That's one for every couple of minutes that your house is running at its normal rate. Our cyclists have been pedalling for 10 hours now to keep that needle in the green. It's been a very ordinary day in the house, but there's not been a moment that the Collins haven't been using up power. Nick, hi again. How much energy have they consumed up to now? Can we have a look? Well, have a look. We're on 8.4 kilowatt Eight, hours. 8.4, 8.4 kilowatt hours. Right, let's consult the board. 8.4 kilowatt hours represents 903 uh, uh, miles cycled. 
which is, in terms of food calories, if you're interested, 58,709 calories. In terms of digestives, again, my personal favourite, 1,174 digestives plus a little bit of digestive. At last, Mrs C's putting on the roast. But look what's happened to our voltmeter. That cold chicken has brought the temperature of the oven right down, so the thermostat has kicked in to bring the oven back up to the required heat. Suddenly, the energy demand from the house is enormous. Easy. Here we go. Here we go, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on, we need a little bit more, guys. Let's go. Let's keep it in the green. Keep it up. Our cyclists are working full throttle, and still, we just can't seem to get out of the white in the meter. Come on, guys. We're, uh, we're almost down in the red zone for the first ever time. What's yeah. happened? They've just put a very large load on. They've just put a lot of power on. As you can see, our meter is looking dodgy. We're in the closest to the red than we've ever been for the entire day. Yeah, this is the worst it's been today. It really, really dropped down. I'm going to ask Colin, Colin, what, what happened? There. I think they uh, I'm not really sure, actually. In fact, nothing extraordinary is happening. Dad and the kids are still watching television, Mum's back on the computer, and the chicken is cooking away in the kitchen. But it's nearly 6 o'clock now, and our cyclists have been going since 7 a.m. They're close to collapse. They've had an uphill struggle all afternoon, but now they've got a mountain to climb. We are dangerously close to that red, the, the place you never wanted to be today, Colin. What are we going to do about it? Do we need to get on bikes? Do we need to get on a bike? Right, right, let's let's Okay, let's do it. Okay. Oh. As the Collins family carry on preparing their evening meal, they still remain blissfully unaware of the excruciating workload they're inflicting on our cyclists. That meter is well and truly into the red and has been for quite some time now. Our cyclists are absolutely exhausted. The chicken came out of the oven, but then they put the crumble in. We thought we were going to get a breather and we're just not going to get one. Honestly, I don't know how much longer these guys can last. We're at 21, roughly. Fingers crossed we can just keep going for a little bit longer until we get those Collins out of the house. The kettle's about to go on. Guys, come on, one last push, one last push. The kettle's going on. Don't believe this. Oh, my God, guys! The power just went off then. Yeah. OK, we just had our first blackout in the house. It dropped right off. We had an actual blackout. Now, these guys are having to pedal double hard now to try and claw ourselves back on it. It's all gone off. No, we're back on now. Is it back on? For just a few seconds, the human power station was completely overwhelmed. And now our experts think our human dynamos have reached the end of the line. Our cyclists are absolutely exhausted. They can't do any more. They're working as hard as they can. Do you know what? I think it's time to get our family out of the house. Dallas, go for it. No doorbell. Hello? 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 Hello, it's Dallas from the show. Can you all come down, please? Are you all there? Can you just drop... Everyone drop what you're doing and come down? And follow me. Oh, you look really worried. Are you OK? I'm fine, yeah. Let's go, let's go. I'd like you to follow me, follow me, follow me. Right, come with me, come with me. Are we all up here? Now, listen, you guys knew you were taking part in a big experiment today, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Have you any idea what it is? No. Or what it was? Any, any inkling of a clue at all? None whatsoever. I've got no idea no, whatsoever. No, it's someone about an eco-friendly house. Ah, interesting. Interesting. OK, well, let me explain a little, a little something to you. Early today, we unplugged your house from the mains because we wanted to see if we could provide your energy needs in a completely different way. OK. Come with me. <laughs> Guys, I want you to say hello to your very own human power station. Come through. Oh, my God.
come down and meet your own human power station. That's it. When you were baking your sponge cake, when you were putting your apple crumble in the oven, <laughs> roasting your chicken, these guys allow the power to make all those things happen. It's a bit crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any idea what was going on today? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. We thought some things might be happening in the house while we were going along, but we had no idea that there were all these poor people cycling away. Your day-to-day -day activities affected some very hard-working human beings. Let's take a look back at the day and see what pointers for saving energy the human power station has been showing us. Dad is taking off his clothes! Try not to spend so long in the shower. As soon as your oven comes up to the right temperature, get on with your baking. Don't boil more water in the kettle than you need to use. And don't reboil it. Switch over to energy saving light bulbs. I've just been told not to hoover so much. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a whole host of other ways you could cut down on waste. Insulate your loft and fill your cavity walls. Turn your thermostat down by one degree. Try not to overuse your tumble dryer. Don't put on half loads in your washing machine and dishwasher. And turn off the appliances you're not using. And you could save yourself quite a bit of cash and probably reduce the damage to the environment at the same time. How do you think guys react now having seen what's going on? Is it going to make you think a bit more about perhaps how you use energy? I'll uh, probably be a bit more mindful about how many appliances we have at the same time on. Yeah. Um, and using it more efficiently as well, you know, putting, if you turn the oven on, baking two or three things at a time. <laughs> yeah, we're all guilty of it. Yes. The thing is, yes. you don't even think about it on, until you sit on a human it, scale absolutely. like this. Like, quite how much power goes into all our stuff we yes. have in our houses. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking time. Thank Thanks. you to all these poor cyclists. Yeah. <laughs> Keep them fit. So a big thank you to our lovely family. But one more thing before we leave. I reckon the cyclists all need a good cup of tea and we think it's only fair that you do the paddling for the tea. What do you reckon? <laughs> That's it from the show. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well done, guys. Good night. We're taking on bike generators out the studio so you can find out for yourself firsthand just how much energy you use in your home. We've been powering the Bang Rocho's electric kettle on pedal power alone, and it's taken a lot of effort. Now, our resident brain box, Dr. Yan, has also come up with some great energy-saving demos that you can try at home. So go onto our website, slash bang, get onto our hands-on section, and get involved. I've got the power! How many people can live on planet Earth? Horizon investigates on Wednesday at 9 on BBC Two. Next here on BBC One, fancy a curry? Sounds good to me.